Hi and welcome to this first video on solving trig equations. You may remember in the previous trig videos we mentioned the six general trig concepts we will be covering in this video series. These next three videos cover the concept of trig equations. In part one of trig equations we will be looking at steps to follow when solving trig equations. The first being to decide on what type of trig equation you have so that you then know each time how to proceed. We will consider four possible types of equations, working through an example of each. So the steps to follow are first to identify the type of equation you have. Once you've identified the type, then next is to calculate the reference angle. Then once you've done this, you're left with deciding which quads to solve in and then simplifying and finding your solutions, giving your answers as required. First, let's have a look here at the four types of trig equations that we encourage you to consider. The first type is when a ratio equals a value. Here the right hand side can be a value or a ratio of a numerical value which can be calculated. Like for example, it's possible to calculate the value of tan of 200 degrees. Type 2 is where you have a ratio equaling the same ratio but where the angles appear different. Type 3 is when the ratios are co-ratios of each other. And type 4 is where you get a combination of ratios, potentially on both sides of the equation. Let's have a look now at the worked examples for each of these situations. We'll start here with an example of type 1. We are asked to solve for x without the use of a calculator. The first thing here is to recognize this trig equation as a type 1 example. A ratio equals a value. Then next, in order to calculate the reference angle, we need to calculate the value on the right hand side. Do you recognize the special angle families here? The 45 degree family in the third quad, 180 plus 45, and the 30 degree family, 180 plus 30, also in the third quad. Pause to give this question a try on your own before we go through the solution together. Once you've reduced using your special angles, replace each with their ratio values. This is where having your theory at your fingertips really starts to feel great, finding yourself in comfortable and familiar territory. Once you've established the value on the right hand side, you can now calculate the reference angle, or in this case you can work it out, because of the ratio being from our special triangle. Did you recognize this? Our reference angle is 60 in this case, and because sine of 2x is negative, we need to solve for 2x in the third and fourth quads. So in the third quad, 180 plus 60 is 240 degrees, and in the fourth quad, 360 minus 60 is 300 degrees. And double checking the interval in which our answers for x need to be given, it is useful to see that if x needs to lie between 0 and 180, then 2x can lie between 0 and 360. Our answers for x in this example are 120 or 150 degrees. The next example is a type 2. It asks us here to solve for x giving the general solution. Let's have a quick look first at what giving the general solution means before trying this example. We'll refer to the sign graph to illustrate the concept of general solution. As you can see, the graph has been drawn extending to infinity in both directions. Let's consider all the possible values of x for which sine of x equals a half. So all the places where this line cuts the graph. And so if we look at the equation of sine x equals a half, we observe first that sine must be positive, in other words our solutions will be in the first and second quads, and that the reference angle is 30 degrees. Together these solutions are not evenly spread over the 360 degree period of the graph, and so it is necessary to consider them separately in order to represent each of them easily in an equation. As you can see by the graph, each group of solutions has its own rhythm. The first quad solution recurs every 360 degrees in both directions. And the same is true for the second quad angle, also recurring every 360 degrees in both directions. We will have a look at how to represent these groupings of solutions in an equation when we go through the solution to our second worked example. 
Here is the question again and a reminder of the four steps required. Let's take a look through them again quickly. First, to identify the type of equation, in this case as type 2. Next is then to choose the reference angle. Thirdly, to identify which quads to solve in. And finally, simplify and solve, checking the required interval for x. Pause here now to give yourself time to try it. So starting with the first step, here we have sine of this angle equals positive sine of this angle, which means it is an example of a type 2 equation. Next we identify the reference angle as 2x. It is usually simplest to make the angle on the right hand side the reference angle. Then we identify the quads to solve in. In this case the question is where is sine positive? And then lastly, in order to simplify and solve, we need to check the required interval. In this question, we've been asked to give the general solution. This means each of these solutions recurs every 360 degrees, and so we add N360 in each case. In N360, it is really important that N is an integer, because this equation is only true if a full 360 degrees is added or subtracted each time. So here for the first quad solution, we have x plus 30 equals 2x plus n360, which simplifies to this equation of x. And then the second quad solution is x plus 30 equals 180 minus 2x plus n360, which simplifies to this equation for x. Remember in each case to add n an element of z. These are the two general solution equations that make up the solution for this trig equation. And what this means is that all the possible answers that would make this trig equation true can be found using these two general solution equations. A frequently asked question is, do we only use general solution when asked? And the answer is that we use it when asked, yes, but we also use it when the angles are complicated or when the interval is not standard or both. These equations will offer the opportunity to find all valid solutions. We will illustrate this in the next video. So far we have looked at type 1 and type 2 equations and in the next video we will consider examples of type 3 and type 4 equations. So keep going, hopefully these first two types are making sense to you and that you are ready now to tackle the next two. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.